Good morning, good morning, everyone. And we just want to welcome you, whether you are watching us virtually or right here. And we just ask the Holy Spirit to be with us as we experience him in exciting and vibrant ways today. Welcome, welcome. That's right, welcome, family, friends, guests, and visitors. Welcome both here in this building and those worshiping virtually. There may have been some sound issues. I think we're okay. Of course, if there's a sound issue right now, virtually you can't hear me. You just watch me talk. So hopefully it's fixed, but Facebook us if we need that um, uh, to get fixed. Welcome. Some of the bus showed up. Maybe more bus will show up, but we're glad you're here. Today's our third week of Advent. Next week we end it. Um, and we'll talk about next week when we do our announcements. But today we're going to focus on love and the figure of Joseph. Somebody we don't know much about, but Pastor Faye is going to educate us and tell us all about how Joseph loved in new ways, right? Um, I'm we'll excited. <laughs> so, but we ask the Holy Spirit to send upon this place because in this world, 2023, there is violence, there's addiction, there's wars, there is non-love happening in this world. And yet Jesus came into this world to show us the love God has for us. So may we, whatever's going on in our lives, put that aside and let be open to Jesus coming into your world, letting God fill you with the love he needs. Let that Holy Spirit work within each person today as we worship. So let's worship. Amen. And I think we'll begin worship today because of the Advent season, the lighting of our Advent wreath. So we'll have uh, this incredible family come on up. 
Come on up, Zach. <laughs> and mom and dad. You can, oh, yeah, the microphone? Good. In a world of chaos, harm, violence, illness, and despair, your love, O oh God, breaks through and saves. We so often forget that you, O oh God, saves us from ourselves by becoming Jesus, born to teach us the love you have for us. We are chained by this world of non-love, injustice, segregation, inequity, that love seems the underdog with no chance of winning. Your love, O Holy One, breaks our chains of this world and breaks them to set us free. In a world in which freedom seems elusive to many, your love sets us free from our emotions, fears, worries, and concerns. We need to trust your love so that we can be set free in our illness, grief, shame, guilt, trauma, and live a life with your love guiding us in navigating this world. Thank you for loving us so much that you came into this world as a baby to show us your love for us. Today we light the candles of hope, joy, and love. <laughs> He's on it. <laughs> All right, seriously, let us pray. Love does break chains. Let us experience Christ's love, God's love, and freeing ways that create love in each of us that, so that we can be love to a world that so desperately needs it. Amen. Jesus is the ultimate shepherd. He is willing to leave the 99 to save the one. He will keep the wolves away and provide for our needs. All we have to do is follow. you make a way you walk me through the valley but you never steer me wrong so lead on the shepherd lead on Shepherd, step by step and 
day by day. Lead me on, Lord, I pray. Go get start, walk my grave. Lead on, good shepherd. Lead on, good shepherd. Lead on, good shepherd. Yes, lead on, good shepherd. Just love this um, gospel road band. Amen. At this time, we will pass the peace. First, we want to pass the peace to those who are watching virtually. Peace be with all of you. Peace and love. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. Pass the peace to everyone. All right, everyone. All right. All right, so Life of the Church Celebration of Ministries, we're combining them all. So one quick note, the chairs do not need to be taken down today. The chairs do not need to be taken down today. Karen, stop having her clap. You, no response. We are not in a Pentecostal church right now, Karen, so sit down. <laughs> um, it's because the preschool is doing some programs in here with the parents uh, next week, and they need these set up. However, all of this needs to be moved, including the poinsettias, because we do have the cheerleading group in here during the week. Carolyn, where do you want to put these? All right, so we're going to get cards from the kitchen, put these on them, and then wheel them in the back. All right, so when we end worship, we're moving this stuff over, and we're putting these on carts and putting them in the back. All right, so that's one thing. Um, tonight, there's supposed to be rain, but at this point, I don't trust the weather. I mean, I know. I should have become a weather person because really it's the only profession. You could be wrong and still be right. Let me, let me demonstrate. Today, there could be some rain. Could be heavy at some times. There may be some wind. Maybe not. Just depends on where you're located. There could be some sunshine, depending on how the clouds move. And maybe, depending if it gets a little bit colder, could be some snowflakes. But, you know, really just prepare for some weather that'll show up. See, no matter what happens, I'd be right right now. And I could be making a lot more money sitting in a TV station. <laughs> saying that. 
Anyway, so at 5 o'clock, we're going to make the call if we're going to do caroling. Um, I will send out a Facebook message and an email if we're not going to do it. If you see no Facebook message and you get no emails from us, we're still going to do it. So if there's a little light drizzle, that's okay. Put on a hat. We can still do it. Um, afterwards, the youth are going to do a little um, Christmas party. If we don't do caroling, the youth will still meet um, at 6 and we'll do a Christmas party. So regardless, youth will be here at 6. Um, yeah, all of them, the whole group, uh, uh, um, all of our youth, uh, from the young ones to the old ones. Yep, everyone's invited. And caroling's for everybody. Everybody can go, including you, Zach. And we're going to put you as a solo, too. <laughs> the people we're going to, they won't care. <laughs> it, <laughs> anyway, okay, that's the caroling thing. Next Sunday is Christmas Eve. So, here's the way it's happening. In the morning, we will close off Advent. This is only week three. So week four is next week. This only happens every six or seven years. We will have our 9 a.m. and our 11 a.m. We will talk about the manger, but we will not talk about the birth of Jesus. We're just talking about this concept of the manger. That's in the morning. Then at night, 5 o'clock, we're in here with the praise band doing a family-oriented service. Maybe about 40 minutes or so. I promise I will preach very shortly. Um, but there'll be some kids singing, some other stuff. We will have communion. Then we'll have our 7 and 10 in the um, sanctuary. And those will be traditional um, with hymns and solos and maybe choirs and all that stuff. So five services are happening next Sunday. Two in the morning, three at night. You should come to two of them. One in the morning, one at night. <laughs> um, but if you want... <laughs> yeah, or you come to all of them. But if you want the Christmas Eve message, you have to come at night. Because the morning will not have that message. Does that make sense? So that's why we're doing it. Because Advent ends next Sunday. So we're going to close off Advent. I think that's it for um, life of the church. Is there anything else I'm missing? Yo. Oh, the clothing? Oh, yeah. Why don't... Actually, do, yeah. Can you use them? Um, oh, then you. Okay, just a quick thing on the closing initiative. I want to thank everybody, including the community, for donating clothes. Um, we still need more. Not much. There's a lot. We need more of little kids' clothes. Um, and, yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Debbie just reminded me. Um, we need hangers and boxes, because when we pack up, we're going to need cardboard boxes. Um, I want to thank everybody who has folded, donated so far. Um, I want to thank Terry and Dwayne. They hung up shelves yesterday, and my sister came down and donated shelving units for the middle and helped organize the room. I want to invite anybody that wants to go down to the prayer room and see our progress. We're making great strides in that. Thank you all. Yeah, let's give a round of applause for this ministry, because this is going to be huge for us. And then for us to work with our partners, so that's a huge ministry there. Um, and so the celebration of ministries I want to do is for all the staff that works tirelessly um, behind the scenes. Um, and anybody who walks in this building during the week, you know what Colleen does. Um, and some people actually help out when Colleen's not here. Um, and it can be challenging because I'm a pretty quick worker. And so things turn around quickly in that office. But Colleen can match my speed, sometimes even faster than me. Which sometimes I got to tell her to calm down. <laughs> um, but everyone works tirelessly for this church to um, be the beacon of light. So let's just give a round of applause to all the staff uh, for the church. <laughs> what was that? No, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that later, yeah. Um, but I'm going to have uh, Jen, who's um, kind of the interim chair of SPRC, because Carolyn's, although recovering well, and I think she's watching us, she has a message from SPRC. Standing with me, and if you want to hand out envelopes. So every year we do a we ask the congregation for a love offering for those staff who um, work, as Dave said, behind the scenes. Um, so I want to recognize those staff and the generosity of our congregation for these donations. Um, so first we have our dear Pastor Pilts. And then I'm going to ask you to stay up here. Stay up here when you get yours. Pastor Faye, Miss Judy, 
Would you please come round? Oh, she's going to come round, so stay still. Gary. And Tammy. Thank you so much for everything that you guys do behind the scenes for all the tireless hours that you put in um, from SPRC and from the congregation. Thank you. Thank you. And I've been to churches where staff is limited, and that means ministries are limited. Because there's staff here, ministries abound in this church, and we're rebounding in other ways of um, ministry. So be proud of yourselves. This is an amazing church to be in and what we can do outside of this church. All right, let's go to some joys and concerns. Yes. Do we have any joys? Yes. Hello. Yesterday I went to okay. Washington Crossing. Oh, there you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> we couldn't see where you were. <laughs> A voice from... Remember, yeah, it, it, I thought God was talking to me. I'm like, uh, that's next week, God. Calm down. <laughs> Yesterday I went to Washington Crossing to Wreaths Across America. Oh, that's cool. And it was wonderful. If you've never been there, you go and you place wreaths on the uh, graves of the veterans. So it's really nice. Oh, nice. And it was a gorgeous day. Um, Thursday, we had the joy of the winter concert at Tennant. Um, and my overachieving daughter in the background there, who was in all but two ensembles. She's trying to figure out for the spring concert if she can be in all of them. <laughs> this Wonderful. one's too. This is, this is a joy to back up on the clothes initiative. Um, everybody that's um, been working on the team, um, Faye for starting it. Um, uh, Maggie has been coming in and folding. Everybody that's been folding, Debbie has gone around and collected a whole bunch of hangers on her own time and anybody in the community and anybody that's coming and fold. So I'm very appreciative and the guys that, you know, Gary that came in and helped Dwayne and Terry that came in and helped Dwayne. I'm just very appreciative for all the help. Yeah. Thank you. And just in case you want to know, um, Walmart throws away their hangers at the checkout, so I was rummaging through their trash. Really? <laughs> Boy, that would have been a picture I would love to have gotten. <laughs> Saying ministry in action. <laughs> that would have ended up on our uh, UM probably news webpage. Is somebody behind me? Oh, come on. Okay. Go ahead, Polly. Okay. Uh, on Thursday, I was able to do about five things, uh, uh, each in their way, and then I uh, dropped my uh, uh, lanyard that had my name on it, uh, and gratefully, somebody looked at it and put it in my cubby in the evening, and I was so happy uh, about that. And Santa came yesterday to Anne's Choice, and I got a picture with Santa. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So I just want to clarify. You're saying when I get older, I can just do five things in one day, and that's it? Well, that was the five things in the morning, and then I came home for lunch. Oh, so, oh there was only the morning. <laughs> oh. All right. That doesn't sound relaxing either. <laughs> Um, just that my daughter Maddie had a cheerleading competition and they did so good yesterday. They finished in third place and the only two teams that beat them were elite teams, which are like in a different, high, much higher level. What so was it? What was cheerleading it? Competition. Cheerleading competition. Cheerleading. Nice job. Yeah. It was down in, uh, so that was, and also joys for um, my, my girlfriend Jen's daughter just turned 21. So, yeah. Cool. After church today, Ken and I are heading down to the Ocean City Tabernacle. We're going to see our favorite Christian singer, Sandy Patty. She was supposed to be at the Tabernacle this summer, but had COVID. So we're really looking forward to a good concert tonight at the Tabernacle. Awesome. Awesome. Some joys from Facebook. Um, Oberholzer to say thanks to all the staff and volunteers for all the work they do. 
um, uh, Christian Joy is last night. Pete B and I took the kids to the Rosebridge Farm, and it was so beautiful. The kids were able to feed the baby goats, Christmas crafts, hot cocoa, and bonfires. Highly recommend. So that's her joy. Uh, another joy from Tammy. Good morning. I'm grateful for technology and wonderful team that allows me to get participate in worship virtually when I can't physically be present in the building. I think those are all the joys on Facebook. Yes. I have a couple joys. Okay. Number one, Vincent's medicine was finally approved. Number two, I got a phone call last week. We got an appointment down at Penn next month. Oh, good. Um, number three, the jam session Tuesday night was so much fun. And I gave my boss one of the postcards, and her husband took it. They belong to St. John's Lutheran in Hatboro. Oh, yeah. And he showed it around, and they said, what a great idea that was, and how awesome the postcard was. So kudos to Sam. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now let's see if they'll show up. Yeah. <laughs> on Friday night, my daughter-in-law threw my um, son an amazing surprise 40th birthday party at the melting pot. And if anybody knows Jimmy, there's nobody who deserves it more. And he was just so surprised that like 80 people showed up for him. So Aww. it was a really great night. That's great. It's great. It's great. Any other joys? Okay. What are concerns? So, um... Concerns for uh, the Mullins, um, Joe, Betsy, and Beth. So Beth is now in the hospital. She had a small TIA. I don't know if she's out. I talked to them yesterday. Joe is still in the hospital. Um, looks like he had a minor stroke. Um, he seems to be recovered okay, but there's still some uh, issues going on there. So I know Betsy's watching right now. So prayers for the entire uh, Mullen family um, and uh, their recovery. Uh, Prayers for, um, well, I'm going to bring up, so Judy is an inspiration to me. This woman can go through surgery and still show up here. Like, I thought I was the only one with my eyes, but you, you, you keep pushing me to the next level. So she just went through an entire procedure to get rid of a bunch of, I guess, skin cancer. And you have like 50 stitches right now. And she's playing today. That happened this week. So just prayers for Judy and yeah. recovery. Um, And now I have to match that when I get sick to still show up. Um, prayers for Terry because his knee's getting better, but still um, needs prayers there. And then on, and, um, I'll check Facebook if there's other concerns. Uh, there's more, but I got to find them. Oh, okay. Any other concerns? Continued prayers for Dawn Park as she navigates through the concussion yeah. and all the other side issues. Yes, yeah. yes. Another concern, oh, go ahead, Eileen. Uh, uh, two of my great-grandchildren have um, RSV, mm. uh, and the little one, it's her second time. She's in CHOP, uh, but hopefully she'll recover. She had it when she was two weeks old, and now she's a year, and uh, she has it again. Okay. But hopefully they'll recover. Okay. Thank you. Um, Karen's usually here with her son Jacob, and Jacob used to be in my old youth group, um, so I've known them for years, been family friends. Um, her husband, Paul, um, was taken to the ER today. Um, looks like there's some heart issues going on, but I don't know anything else other than that. So prayers for Karen and Paul and that entire family um, as they navigate what's happening with um, Paul, their, her husband. Um, continue prayers for the Baranowskis um, as Chuck's still in Altman and then um, Caroline's recovery. Yes. And prayers for me. I'm in extreme pain today. I'm sorry. But God is good. That's all I can say. Yeah. Okay. I just ask for continued prayers for my sister who's... Um, we don't know what is causing it, but she's continuing to have many falls just out of the blue. Okay. And for George, whose lymphoma is getting worse, he's had more areas firing up, as they say. So prayers for new medicine they're starting tomorrow might help him a little. Okay. On Facebook, we have... Kristen's concern is for everyone battling cancer, 
and bravely working through trauma. Um, prayers from Tammy for healing from pneumonia that wants to hang around. That's all the concerns on Facebook. Continued uh, prayers for Pat Norris and the loss of Ed and, and their family. Yeah, funeral is on Thursday, so yeah, prayers for that family as they navigate this time. Okay. My s older sister uh, caught all the woes that uh, I t was told would not uh, would happen when I got my cochlear implant. Uh, I was 70 when that happened, and she's 83, and is not in all that good health. So we can pray for my sister, Carolyn, and my friend, Irwin. He's, when I go down to Charlottesville on Thursday, he's going to be tested to see what is going on with him. Any other concerns? Let's go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so amazing. You are a miracle worker, a healer, a peacemaker, a mind regulator. You are a reconciliator. God, you are everything. You have heard the cries of the people this morning, dear God. So we ask for your mercy. We ask for your intervention. We ask for your healing power, God, at this time. We ask, God, that you be with those who are going through procedures. We ask, God, for help with those who are housing challenged, who do not have the basic needs, God. We also, God, lift up those who are going through mental illnesses, any kind of illnesses, God. Family dysfunctionality, dear God. We ask for peace, the peace that passes all understanding. We need peace not only in the streets of Philly, but all over, God, the wars. We need them to cease. We ask all of these things, God, because you are the only one that we can turn to. Yes, yeah, so God, we turn to you because of the blessings that flow in and around and through us. We give you thanks and praise for the joys that are in our lives, knowing that even in joys there are struggles. So God, we ask for that healing hand upon all of us. We do all this because you chose to come into this world, a world of violence, a world that was just icky, and you came into it to show us your love. So let your love, oh God, surround each person, comfort each person, and create that peace that helps us all focus on you. So God, we ask that each person seem, each person here and those that are watching focus on you and no matter what's going on in their lives. And to help us focus on you, let us all share the same words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Isaiah 9, 6 says, for, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Precious promise, Son of God and Son of Man, heaven's glory in a manger has come to us in Bethlehem. Oh,
going to take my prerogative at this point. Uh, the people who were paid uh, got a check that they probably had to return. Uh, but one thing that did not happen was prayer for them. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for these uh, willing workers. They're paid, but yet uh, they're, it, it's amazing. So, Lord, you, they give us joy. Protect them, guide them, and be with them all along the way. And we thank you in your blessed name. Amen. You're welcome. Yeah, got to have that prayer. Uh, <laughs> let's go with the responsive reading. Holy God of joy. We rejoice in the reality of who you are. We live, we live within, within, the, within joy the joy of, of your, your love, love for us. Our, our contentment, contentment comes and goes. Our, our happiness, happiness ebbs, ebbs and flows. flows. Our feelings depend upon our circumstances, our physical health, our brain chemistry. But, but our, our joy is deeply rooted, rooted in our identity as, as your, your beloved, beloved children. children. And, and we, we give, give you thanks. thanks. Amen. Amen. This scripture focuses on Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus. The Bible doesn't provide much about him, but we are given some glimpses into his character. Joseph was humble, caring, obedient, and loving. Although Joseph was a non-speaking character in this narrative, his actions were loud. In spite of possible repercussions or embarrassment, he chose to marry Mary. Mary. That's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Not put her away or divorce her. This bold decision demonstrated his compassion and love for her. It also shows his faith in God. I can only imagine Joseph's first emotions as he heard this unexpected news, a pregnant fiance, and he hadn't been with her. He was probably hurt and angry, also angry. Yet Joseph's obedience to God and love for Mary overrode everything that he felt. Here is the question to ponder. How would you handle a situation where you had to select God's voice, which could lead to difficult challenges or follow a safe way out. 
Today's scripture comes from Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 23. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and the give a birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, now for the children's message. Can I have the little ones? <laughs> so good to see you guys today. Wow. You want you can sit down? I wish I could, but if I get down there, I don't know if I can get up. <laughs> one of can um you take one of these yes thank you so much <laughs> I use Christmas colors <laughs> oh if you take more than one that's okay because you guys can keep them. I don't really need them back. <laughs> I'm not like Pastor Dave. He gives out stuff and then he takes it back. <laughs> Did I go there? <laughs> oh, he's laughing. <laughs> All right, you guys. What shape is this that you are holding? Does anyone know? Do you know what this heart represents? What Jesus is love. Oh, Jesus is love. Any other thoughts? Jesus is his love. Oh, so sweet. Any other thoughts? Love. Love. Absolutely. Great job, you guys. Do you know what it means to love? What does it mean to love someone? Deeply care for to deeply care about them. To deeply care about them. What does it mean to love somebody? Do you love someone? That to help them with help them. To help them? You're right, right. When you love someone, you care about them, you help them. Good job, you guys. Do you know that God loves all of you? He loves you so much. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much. And we love you too. Amen. Amen. Oh, you guys are so precious. Thank you so much. <laughs> the little ones. Oh, look, thank you guys you. get to take that home with you. <laughs> Wait till I do next week's. I'm going to have stuff in front of you. I'm not going to take it all back. I'm just joking. That was good. I like that. All right. Thank you, Pastor Faye. So connecting with God and reflection, I think, is the next section. What I want everyone to do is not look at this candle, but look at those four right now. So as we think about Advent, focus on those four candles. One's almost burnt out. Two are burning, and one has not been lit yet. How does that describe your life?
how does that describe your relationship with God? How does that describe the need for Jesus to enter into this world? So, God, let us continue to focus on this Advent season as we look at these candles. May they remind us of our journey with you and remind us that that light still needs to come into this world. We give you thanks and praise for allowing this moment for us to connect with you. So take a final look at those candles. What is one thing you can do this Advent to be a light in someone else's life? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dave. All right, church. Are we ready for a word this morning? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I just want to say um, I just really am so thankful for the little ones. Somehow children just make you feel better. I don't know about you. I guess that's why I've always been in the children business. Seems like every job I've ever had, starting as a teenager, was always working with children. So I guess that was my destiny. Amen. All righty. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, so amazingly awesome in all ways, I give you honor for the rest, the rest of my days. You, the creator, the great I am. How wonderfully blessed is your name. Although, Lord, I have prayed, meditated, and even stressed over this word, I need your strength and presence to show up in a mighty way. Therefore, I pray for these words to be encouraging and impactful, but all to your glory in the magnificent name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. This morning's message is titled Igniting in Love, but with a focus on Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus. I'm going to try to slow it down. People say I read a little bit too quickly. I guess that's um, because I'm always doing spoken word, and I do that kind of quickly, so I'm going to try to slow it down. As I read the word igniting repeatedly while preparing this sermon, Several synonyms came to my mind, erupting, exploding, bursting, burning, overwhelmingly explosive. To me, all these words are loud, resonating, boldly, strong, in your face kind of words that just won't seem to leave you alone. They're keeping you attentive and captivated. I love that word. Because God's igniting love captivates you. It holds you. It's magnetic. Therefore, igniting love seems ongoing, unstoppable, and just so strongly intense. For me, this kind of love can only be God. As the word says, God is love, which is found in 1 John 4, 8, the NIV translation. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So if you love, you know God. He dwells within you. He's bursting inside of you. That's how God is. He's an explosion. Amen. You might ask me, what does this igniting love have to do with Joseph? Good question. A man who is silent throughout scripture. I never noticed that. He doesn't say a word. Not a single word. He is that non-speaking character. Some might suggest that he wasn't even that significant. It didn't allow him to even say anything. It was like, 
There's nothing to say of importance. He's no one. How many of you have felt like that? A person of non-importance, but he found great worth in God. And that's the only person that matters to, right? This man who does not speak, he bursts in this narrative of a loudness that exemplifies God's love, an igniting love that will not allow him to publicly disgrace his fiancee, Mary. Initially, I am certain that when Joseph heard this news, his emotions were many and just all over the place. He probably felt pain, a pain of betrayal. How could she do this to me? He probably was angry too, because as we all know, pain eventually manifests into anger. How could this even happen? Joseph may have wanted to hurt her in return, but his actions demonstrated a love that overrode his pain and his anger. Although he was a Jew and faithful to the law, his compassion and love would not allow him to cause Mary pain or embarrassment. Igniting in love, a love through God enabling Joseph to do the seemingly impossible. During those biblical days, would you have done as Joseph? Because if anyone had found out what he had done, you're still accepting this woman who has cheated? Okay. Some men with their huge egos and whatever would not have accepted Mary. The humiliation, the shame, the embarrassment, the pain, the anger would have so much consumed many men. I can't let this happen. I can't let this go down. I'm not letting this go. She has to pay. <laughs> but this beautiful narrative demonstrates God's spirit that enables us to love regardless of the situation or circumstances. His love enables us to love the seemingly unlovable. I'm sure we know those kind of people, right? They work your last nerves. Somebody you really don't want to see. But here he is, here she is, showing up again with all the drama. I can't stand him. I can't stand them. I'm not dealing with them. But it's the kind of love that enables us to forgive and move on to have grace, to move on in joy as well as love. It's an explosive, fiery, hot kind of love. Because you see, God's omnipotent. He's worthy. He graces us with so much mercy. See, our God is hot. That's why I'm praising him. I'm magnifying him. I'm trying to give him everything that I got. The way he blesses me, he gives me a lot. Because in my life, God is out of control. Deep in my spirit, he's anchored with the strongest hold. Because you see, my God, he's off the chain. He touched me. Now I'll never, ever be the same. See, in my life, he'll forever reign. For our God is so hot. That's why I'm glorifying him, trying to give him everything that I got. Because God is my world. He's given me so much. He's given me a lot. He's that explosion erupting inside, providing joy that I can't even describe. His love for us so enormous that for our sins he died. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not die, perish, but have everlasting eternal life. See, my God, he sets me off, igniting, delighting. He sets my soul on fire, giving me all that I desire. God's love is overwhelming, strong. I'll cling to him steadfast, regardless of how long. For our God is outrageous, his goodness, his joy contagious, causing my being to be still as he invokes his will that my praises will never cease as my blessings increase, surrounding me with his peace. 
See, our God is enjoyable, lovable, that our problems are tolerable, solvable. God is so hot that he can't be stopped. In my life, God has dropped a lifetime of satisfaction, happiness, a love unending, forever sending throughout eternity. See, our God is just that hot, can't be, won't be stopped. Because our God is off the hook, causing me to take a second look at my life for all of my worries he took. First Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's that igniting love. Our God is off the chart, loved us from the very start, that nothing can ever tear us apart. Romans 8, 38 and 39, one of my favorite scriptures. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Believe me when I say our God is hot. He has that igniting love. That's why I try to give him everything that I've got. Returning to Joseph, this silent man, this character who we do not even know that much about, that insignificant, some would say. But his love and faith in God teaches us volumes in trust in God. And of course, we know the story, how the story unfolds. Joseph is visited by the angel in a dream, telling him, you can take Mary as your wife because the child in her womb is of God. Wow. I can only imagine the joy that Joseph felt after hearing this news. Whew. Just a big sigh of relief. But it's all about allowing God to reside in us as he enables us to love beyond what we could ever imagine, to love beyond what we could ever do in our own strength. This igniting love is permanent, overflowing, without end. It's a love that will sustain us in our most challenging, difficult moments. It's a love that will strengthen us, encourage us, empower us. So this narrative teaches us all those things. Trust, continue to hold on to the love of God, look to him for all things, because with him, all things are possible. How many times have we experienced situations that definitely require God's intervention when it comes to forgiving and loving? How many times have we just lost it and didn't extend grace? Being transparent, there are numerous occasions when I have not been loving. I spoke harshly and behaved in ungodly ways. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to say that I was sorry or make amends for some of my actions. So some of those folks are not even here, but God knew and he has forgiven me. But I thank God for his grace I thank him for his mercy, his forgiveness, his unconditional igniting love. I now thank God for what he has done in my life via his Holy Spirit. Enabled me to love better, to serve better. Because of this igniting love that begins and ends with God, I have a marvelous story to share with others. See, I have a story to tell, a story many know so well. It's about the Savior born in a manger, holiest son of God. He was dissed, treated as a stranger. I have a story all about the king of glory, born to do his father's will. He quieted the raging storm. Peace, be still. Wow, what power. He turned water into wine. First miracle he performed, died so that you, I, be transformed. He healed the sick, enabled the lame to walk. The multitude gathered around just to hear this brother talk. 
Yes, I have a story to tell that many know so well. He touched the blind, now they see. Hallelujah. Christ lives within you and me. He showers our lives with grace and mercy. Yes, I have this marvelous story all about the Lord of glory. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego sent to die in a furnace of fire. No, I don't think so. Satan, you're such a liar. Because God will protect, just watch the marvels he can do. Only God can see you through every situation. Hebrews, Africans set free, emancipation. He forgave me, you, our every iniquity. In endless agape love for you and me. The great Yahweh, we praise him. We adore him every day. In our lives, he will, he will forever stay. His living, his teaching, his suffering and dying too, all because he loved me and you, that igniting love. Resurrection, salvation, God's love, perfection. This is my story of Jesus, the king of glory. With my soul all is well because of this story I have to tell. So when we look at Joseph, we can see ourselves in that story. How God enabled him to love and how God can also do that for us. Let us pray. Dear wonderful and gracious God, thank you for loving us beyond words, thought, or measure. Enable us through your spirit to be vehicles of igniting love everywhere we go. In the marvelous, the magnificent, and majestic name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 And so Joseph did one of the most loving things ever, and we hear no voice in the Bible from him. Where are you called through the love that you have experienced through God in your prayers, your presence, your witness, your service, and your gifts while the band comes forward? And where is God calling you through that love you experience to provide your prayers, your presence, your service, your witness, and your gifts? We'll have the ushers come forward. Dear gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to give back a small portion out of your abundance that you have provided for us. We ask, dear God, that you bless those who have given. And we also ask that you bless those who had the desire but, what, but were unable to give, dear God. And we also ask, God, that you increase this offering, that it will enhance your kingdom through St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Christmas Eve can be so hectic and chaotic with the last minute preparations, but it can also be a time of profound peace. If you take time to soak in God's love in the coming baby Jesus' birth. <laughs>
addiction. I encourage us all to go out there with the igniting love of God, share the love, tell the story of Jesus the Christ, and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Have a great Sunday, everyone. God bless. See you next week, twice.